welcome on in to our sixth episode of Around the Big Sky, presented by Jimmy John's. I'm Carl Hunt. And I'm Blake Barrington. Today we'll take a look at what's going on in Big Sky soccer, golf, volleyball, and cross country. We'll also be joined by Eastern Washington senior forward Brooke Dunbar and Idaho senior runner Dwayne Stucker. Blake, what's going on in Big Sky soccer? Montana took over sole possession of first place in the Big Sky standings last week as the Grizz improved to 4-0-1 with 13 points in league play. Montana defeated Northern Arizona 1-0 before playing Southern Utah to a scoreless draw. Northern Colorado moved to second at 3-1-2 with 11 points after a 1-1 week on the road with a 3-1 win over Southern Utah and a 2-0 loss to Northern Arizona. Eastern Washington posted two shutouts on the week with a 3-0 victory over Idaho State and a 1-0 blanking of Weber State. With the two wins, the Eagles improved to 3-0-1 in Big Sky play with 10 points. Now tied for the second longest unbeaten streak in league history, Sacramento State has not lost in 13 matches dating back to August 23rd. The Hornets defeated Portland State 2-1 in their only match of the week. Those two teams are currently tied for fourth with nine points. Montana's Claire Howard and Eastern Washington's Kelsey Winston were named co-defensive players of the week after both recorded two shutouts last weekend. Big Sky Offensive Player of the Week honors went to Eastern Washington's Brooke Dunbar, who scored two goals in the Eagles' 3-0 victory over Idaho State on Friday. Brooke is here on our show today. Brooke, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Uh, so your team's on a four-match and beaten streak to begin conference play. Uh, seven goals for you all in the last three matches. What's worked offensively for you? Well, we changed our shape a little bit because in the beginning of the season, it wasn't really working. And I think we've kind of changed our mindset as we changed our shape to more attacking, but also having a little bit more cover in that midfield. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously worked for us, and we're able to get the goals, and um, Kelsey's doing great with the shutouts. So I think just going into practice with the right mindset is really helping us. Uh, so you scored two goals last week against Idaho State, your first multiple goal performance of your career, uh, currently ranked second on the team in scoring. Uh, what was your focus in the offseason just preparing for your senior year? Um, yeah, the off season we got here like early to start training, and I just wanted to make my senior year, you know, the best one. Um, end it with like the best stats, and I want to, you know, win league and go to the tournament this year. So just every day in training, having that mindset and trying to be that leader and example for um, the younger people on the team. And so you've had a lot of success in the postseason, uh, freshman sophomore year, winning uh, the Big Sky tournament. What was the focus, uh, or I guess the the goal for the team coming into your senior year? So our goal, we kind of wanted to focus on like each game and like have some concrete goals for each game. So whether it be a shutout, no losses at home, or, you know, we um, end each half like winning the half or up one or two goals. So we kind of like to take it by each game. But for sure, the goals this year, my senior year, were win conference and go to the tournament. Uh, so you're a California native out of Santa Rosa. What drew you to Eastern Washington? Um, well, I kind of want to get out of California. I like the idea of winter, as crazy as that sounds. <laughs> um, and just, I like the aspect of the family here at Eastern, the whole athletic community. The people here were amazing. And I like the idea of it being like a fairly new program and I can come in, um, freshman year and, you know, make that difference and continue it on to my senior year. So you were named Big Sky Offensive Player of the Week this week. Um, along with one of your high school teammates, Claire Howard at Montana, she was the co-defensive player of the week. Uh, what's it like facing off against her? Yeah, I know. She's been my best friend since kindergarten, so it's crazy. Um, super proud of her for getting that. And um, facing her will be, you know, a challenge. She's super good in the air, and she has a strong back line. But, you know, going into it, I think – we're ready for Montana, and I hope to score a goal on her. <laughs> so what's been your favorite memory so far playing for the Eagles? Um, I think my favorite memory, I mean, it changes um, each year, but for sure my freshman year um, when we went to the um, Big Sky Tournament, we won in uh, PKs, and then we go to the NCAA Tournament the first time. It was just super exciting. And then again, sophomore year, we play USC again in the turn NCAA Tournament. And um, although we lost, we were able to take the, you know, reigning champ into double overtime. So that was super exciting. So I know you're a college athlete. You don't get much free time. But what do you like to do when you're not on the pitch or studying? Um, I like to sleep a lot. But um, I like to hang out with my friends. And I really um, 
like to take advantage of the Pacific Northwest. I've been trying to go on hikes and explore Washington while I'm still here. What's one thing your teammates would be surprised to know about you? Hmm. That's, That's a, a hard one. question. <laughs> Um, I think they would be surprised to know that uh, hmm. I have a huge fear of public speaking, actually, okay. which is crazy because always public speaking and, you know, talking and whatnot. But I'm actually, it makes me very nervous. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> well, Brooke, we really appreciate you joining us on the show today. Best of luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You bet. That's Eastern Washington senior forward Brooke Dunbar. In action this week, Montana and Northern Colorado host Sacramento State and Portland State in a battle between four of the top five teams in the league. Eastern Washington and Idaho welcome in Southern Utah and Northern Arizona, while Weber State hosts Idaho State. The Big Sky Soccer Championship is November 6th through the 10th in Greeley, Colorado at Northern Colorado's Jackson Stadium. The top six teams in the standings at the end of the regular season will qualify for the conference tournament. To stay up to date with the Big Sky Conference, Follow us on Facebook by searching Big Sky Conference and at Big Sky Conf on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Dinner's great. It's one of your top three favorite meals. You just don't want to have to make it. Well, with Jimmy John's, you don't have to. Whether you live in a sandwich delivery zone or head into the store, you can always get a freaky fresh sandwich. Click to order at JimmyJohns.com. Now let's take a look at what's going on in Big Sky Golf. The Eastern Washington women claimed a sixth-place finish at Seattle's Pat Lesser Harbottle Invitational. The Eagles were led by Madeline Arduzer and Stephanie Heimler, who both shot a three-over par 219. Heimler was named the Big Sky Women's Golfer of the Week as the freshman recorded a low round of 70 at the tournament. This week in Northern Arizona is the lone team in action on the women's side as the Lumberjacks compete in the Pat Bradley Invitational in Lakewood Ranch, Florida. On the men's side, Weber State recorded a fifth-place finish at the Bill Cullum Invitational in California. Weber State senior Jace Frampton was to have the Big Sky men's golf for the week, tying for 16th with a 400 par 212 with a low round of 69. In action this week, Binghamton competes in the Lehigh Invitational. Hartford attends Old Dominion's Outer Banks Invitational, and Sacramento State competes in the Pacific Invitational. When we come back, we'll take a look at Big Sky volleyball and cross country and visit with Idaho senior runner Dwayne Stucker. Need a hotel for work or just a night away? With over 50 hotels open and more on the way, we want to be your home away from home. My Place Hotels is proud to be the official hotel of the Big Sky Conference. Welcome back to Around the Big Sky. Let's take a look at what's going on in Big Sky Volleyball. Northern Colorado remains the only unbeaten team in league play with a record at 6-0. The Bears picked up another set of wins last week against Idaho and Eastern Washington to improve their current win streak to six games. Four teams currently have two losses in conference play. Sacramento State moved into sole possession of second place after picking up a 3-0 victory over Portland State this past Tuesday to improve to 5-2 on the season. Sitting at 4-2 in Big Sky play are Southern Utah, Montana State, and Idaho. These three teams are all currently tied for third place in the standings. Sacramento State's Ashton Olin was named the Big Sky Offensive Player of the Week. Olin had a total of 123 assists for a set average of 12.3 this past week. Montana State's Alyssa Rizzo was named the Big Sky Defensive Player of the Week for the second time this season. Rizzo had back-to-back 30-plus dig performances against Northern Arizona and Southern Utah to help the Bobcats stay in the hunt for the top spot in the conference. The Big Sky Conference airs all of its live stream sporting events on Pluto TV for free, including up to 700 football, men's and women's basketball, volleyball, and selected soccer, softball, and track and field events. Watch online at www.pluto.tv or download the app. Moving over to Big Sky Cross Country. Four Big Sky teams won titles over the weekend. The Idaho State men won Southern Utah's Color Country Invitational. On the women's side, both Idaho and Southern Utah captured first place finishes with the Vandals winning the Inland Empire Championships in nearby Lewiston. Idaho swept the Big Sky Athlete of the Week awards. Freshman Kelsey Swenson finished second with a 5K time of 17 minutes and 27 seconds. Senior Dwayne Stucker timed 23 minutes and 46 seconds to finish sixth in the 8K race to earn Athlete of the Week honors for the second time this season. Dwayne jo- now joins us on the show. Dwayne, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good and excited to be on here. So this is the second time that you've won Player of the Week uh, or Athlete of the Week award. What were some of your goals heading into this season? 
Um, well, this is my uh, last uh, cross country season, so my goal is to go out with a bang. I really wanted to give it my all and see what I could do. What has been uh, the major difference in your training uh, this year compared to maybe like your freshman year? Well, obviously, Travis has been uh, pushing the same like routine, same workouts, but uh, really, I think it's just um, the way I've been uh, looking at it, like mentality wise knowing that it's like my last shot to really like give it my all, it uh, definitely uh, helps color my perspective. Now you also run track and field um, in the distance races. Do you prefer running outside or inside? Uh, no question outside. I'm a distance runner. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Give about me some running... dirt trails. Yeah. I was going to say, what is it about running outside that, you know, really interests you more? Well, just uh, everything about it. I love the uh, feeling of being out in the elements, the wind on my face, the dirt on the trails, being able to look at the wildlife as I run by. Did you know? Just gives me something to do. Yeah. Did you know that you always wanted to run cross country and track and field in college? Um. Well, it just kind of naturally happened. I just happened to be good in uh, high school, and I knew I wanted to go to college. So, if I could uh, get on the team, that was always kind of my plan. So how did you get involved in running cross country and track and field? Like when did it, when did it start for you? Um, back in uh, middle school, technically even before that, I was always a kid who was just loved running places, too much energy. <laughs> did a couple of like elementary school races. Those were fun. But um, in middle school, I just uh, decided, hey, I'd go for it. Uh, I did a little bit of uh, field events, a little bit of a sprint events, and eventually they just wouldn't let me do anything besides distance running. Uh, you chose to stay in-state for college. You're originally from Meridian, Idaho. Uh, what made you mm -hmm. choose Idaho, and why did you choose to stay in-state? Well, I was, I'd looked at a, a bunch of different universities. Uh, I'm an engineering major, and uh, it just so happened that Idaho had exactly the program I wanted, and... Uh, they also had a pretty good team, and they were offering me a pretty good scholarship. There's really no reason to say no. What's your favorite thing about college? Oh, that's an interesting question. I love the uh, just uh, changing uh, just the way uh, all the classes work. It really feels like I'm actually learning something. I definitely love the uh, teammates I have. Get a whole lot of different characters, and they're all so much fun to hang out with definitely gonna miss them when they're gone so what do you and your teammates do when you guys aren't running how do you guys spend your free time um when we're not running and we're not studying for our classes uh every once in a while we'll have like team dinners or team events where we all just get together and uh build that camaraderie that's really important on a collegiate team so you also mentioned that your major is in engineering. What attracted mm -hmm. you to that concentration, and what do you want to do with it when you graduate? Well, I've always just uh, loved tearing stuff apart and putting it back together. You know, part of it's my dad's fault. He's a mechanic and uh, kind of rubbed off on me. But uh, I could totally see myself uh, joining some engineering firm, uh, getting myself planted in the that field and uh, see where it goes from there all right well Dwayne, thanks for taking some time to join us today uh and good luck the rest Thank of the you. season 10 schools are in action this weekend for their final meets before the upcoming big sky championships the big sky cross country championships are set for saturday november 2nd at the boomerang links in Greeley, colorado hosted by northern colorado the women's race begins the day at 10 a.m followed by the men's race at 11 a.m that's a wrap on this week's show. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week to talk more Big Sky Sports. Until then, I'm Blake Barrington. And I'm Carl Hunt. On Around the Big Sky.